Hi folks, this is Alicia Lawrence from Webpage FX bringing you another SEO webinar from Schweiky Media. Today we are going to talk about how to become a link building ninja. Now in the SEO world we have this little joke that link builders are ninjas because they can be really sneaky, not in a bad way, but in a good way getting links on really high domains that just blow your mind. Today I'm going to teach you all the insider secrets of how you can become a link building ninja. So this is actually going to be a multi-part series, and today we're just going to cover content links. Uh, content links, if you can look at that lower part of the slide, uh, you can see what a content link is. It's uh, in like an article, a blog post, um, a, a news site, uh, where they have a link going out to another site. Um, and you can see sometimes it's uh, showed through a line or differentiation in color. And you can see uh, showing your customers appreciation is the link there. Uh, red showing that it's hypertext to a very important website that people should click on to see the source. And uh, so that's what a content link is. It's also known as the inbound link for SEOs, uh, showing that if you have an inbound link, that means a link from another site is pointing to your site. So there's a few examples of inbound links. There are citations, directories, uh, linkable assets, you can get inbound links, and of course, content links. So what are content links? Well, as you can see right there, that's the content link. Um, and there's, there's actually um, a, a kind of a rule where you want to make sure you have content links in an article that have 200 words or more. And therefore, you know that Google is going to be able to uh, spider that and make sure that they index that into Google, uh, bringing more link juice to your site, if that was your inbound link, uh, helping you rank better in the search results. Uh, and inbound links, they tell search engines that another site found your web page valuable and relevant. Uh, more links you get, the more search engines see your site as valuable to their users. This causes your page to rank higher in the search results. Uh, just a few years ago, link building was about quantity, making it easy for sites to quickly build thousands of links through comments and directories. Uh, but Google quickly caught on and now punishes the website for that kind of link building. Instead, they encourage us to build quality links now uh, that create value for the readers. So you want to make sure that if you have any of those sketchy links from a uh, poor websites or directories that aren't really relevant, go ahead and remove those so you're not punished. And then we're going to start uh, learning how to build up a better link portfolio. Now, uh, as you can see, what, what, what exactly uh, makes link building such a major factor in search engine optimization? Well, I'm going to show you a little example of what that could look like. If you see the table above, this is from uh, Open Site Explorer. And you can see what we call domain authority, uh, which is how well a website ranks in the search engine based on a few different factors. Uh, you see my blog there, Mark Comland, even she's Swiky Media. And then two other blogs that were created near the time that my blog was, Mark Comland. Um, and what you want to look at, first you want to look at the domain authority. That shows you how well they're ranking. So congratulations, Swiky, you're beating all of us. Um, and, and of course, uh, this doesn't have just to do with links. This also has to do with on-site uh, page optimization, uh, as well as how old the site is, um, as well as a few other factors. But just to show you a um, comparison of what links mean to your search ranking, to your domain authority, uh, I went and have pointed to that followed linking root domains. That's what you want to look at. Uh, total links are great, but what really counts is uh, unique linking root domains as well as making sure they're being followed. Uh, and that means passing link juice. They're not telling Google, don't scan this link and go index it. So you want to make sure you have followed linking root domains. You see mine has 114, uh, which is more than Pongra and Mixius. And that's why my DA is higher, my domain authority DA is the shortened version of that, is higher than Ponger and Mixios. Um, and, you know, Ponger is close behind as well. But Schweiky definitely has a jump up there, almost through 100 links. And you can tell, you know, they have 10 up on me. So uh, that's why their, their, their website is ranking so well up there. So that kind of shows you what exactly uh, links can do. And just to give you some uh, 
back information of Mark Holland, uh, besides doing the meta description and the title tag um, and doing fresh content on it weekly, I really don't do anything else SEO-wise. It's just linking that one meta description, that title tag. I don't even optimize the post on that because it's more of an experimental blog. Um, so you can tell, wow, it's already at 37. All I'm really doing is linking back to it from my bios. I mean, that's, that's a, a huge impact that links have. So now, where exactly should a link building ninja to be start? Well, first, you want to find the sites that you want to put your links on. And there's different approaches to uh, finding them and to pitching them. So let's take a look at a few basic uh, ways to do that. First, you can go to blog communities and to blog roles. Um, there's tons of uh, just do a basic Google search and say blog communities. And you've got Better Blogging Network. You've got Blog Her. I mean, there's dozens of these blog communities. You can easily go on, look for your niche, and then you could even build a relationship on that, that blogging community with bloggers that you want to publish your content with. Another way, like I said, is the basic Google search. Just type in a query uh, with your basic niche. Let's say you do magazines. So you want to type in uh, blogs that review magazines or blogs that talk about magazines. Let's say your magazine's on health. So do health blogs. You can get tons of health blogs uh, just through Google search. Uh, you can also go to Open Site Explorer. Let's say you have a competitor. You want to see where are they getting their links at. We'll go to Open Site Explorer and type in their URL and all of a sudden pop up and you can see all the different links uh, that they have a backlink to. And I believe Open Site Explorer has a free version where they show a limited version of links. You can also purchase the program and I'll show you all the links that it has going to that site from other sites. Um, also, you can check out the high authority sites. Uh, this is the PR approach. We call it online PR. And uh, what they do basically is they pitch stories specifically to online newspapers, which most new newspapers have an online website now, just not only to get the publicity, but mostly to get the link out of it. Now, they don't tell the journalist, hey, can you give me a link too? But, you know, sometimes they mention at the end, hey, it would be great if you could link to us, but never pressure them. So, you know, but that's a great way also to build your brand up while doing link building is getting those high authority sites. Um, but they're also very difficult to get. Most will go for the blogs. And uh, that leads me to the last two, which is more of uh, what kind of blogs to look for. Uh, you want to make sure that you check them for do follow links. If you have the uh, moz.com toolbar, uh, you can go on there and they have a do follow and no follow tool where you just click a button for, uh, I think it's like a pink highlighter, and no matter what site you go on, it will show you these uh, links are no followed, or if you do the green highlight, these links are do followed. And you want to make sure you get do followed links because no followed means that they don't pass any link juice to your site uh, from the other site. And you want that link juice to bump up your search engine results. So make sure you check for do follow links as well as uh, the domain authority and trust. And you can do that through moz.com as well um, or moz.com's Open Site Explorer, which I mentioned earlier. And uh, that's uh, what you want to do for the Open Site Explorer. So you can go to it. Um, you can check. It'll say DA. It's one of the first things on there when you type in the URL. And then the Moz Trust. And I'll give you a good idea of, you know, what kind of other links does this site have? Are they worthy in Google's eyes? Does Google trust them? Because uh, if someone has a really high domain authority and really low trust, that's a good indicator and a red flag that maybe they're getting their links illegally and they'll probably be hit by Google badly soon, sooner than later. Um, and because Google keeps on um, doing all these different pickups like Penguin um, and all those that are eventually catching all these bad links. So you want to check for domain authority and trust. Those are very important. Now, pitching to the gatekeeper. Um, some of the best practices that I found uh, during my career, learning how to pitch to gatekeepers, which are bloggers, journalists, uh, and I mostly do bloggers, is pitching to them or emailing them 
Monday through Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, it's like no one checks their email. So make sure you email them Monday through Wednesday. And in order to do that, let's say you don't have time Monday through Wednesday, use Tout. Tout is a great tool uh, that allows you to create templates, keep track of relationships that you're emailing, um, and also uh, see the response rate. Great. So between templates. So you have like two templates and you're emailing bloggers. You can see which one of those templates is better to get a higher response rate or a click-through rate. Right? Um, it's also great for scheduling. And so you could send your email out on Friday and just schedule it for Monday at 9 a.m. So it's right there uh, in the bloggers with the gatekeepers mailbox when they get to work that day. Uh, so that's a great way. And also there's different ways to approach pitching to gatekeepers. Um, some people prefer to just be very honest and be, hey, I'm doing this for a link, uh, but, you know, in exchange, I'll give you free content, and, you know, um, the link's very relevant and explain why. But most likely, you'll have to pay for that link um, if you are uh, going to tell them it is for a link. Um, some, some other people, especially SEOs, tend to use a persona. And they just email them as a blogger. Uh, most of us have our own blogs anyways. And just ask if they could guest post, give them free content. And, you know, some bloggers will say, well, if it has a link, then no. And then, you know, obviously you need to search elsewhere. Or otherwise, a lot of them will be ecstatic that you're offering free content for their site, especially if you're an um, expert in that field. So that's great for businesses who want to uh, show their expertise, get a link, uh, and just build relationships with that community um, can really help your business. So you can choose which way you like to go, um, but either way, usually you can get a pretty high success rate when it comes to link building and reaching out to gatekeepers. Now, a ninja's secret best practices. What are things that I have found in link building that's really worked or any of these things that haven't? Uh, first, make sure you place your link after the first paragraph, but before the fourth paragraph. Um, Google tends to put more link juice on the links that are placed higher up in an article. And why I say don't put it in the first paragraph is it's kind of a general rule um, that's kind of rude to put links in that first paragraph, um, unless it's like a quote and you really need a link to that source. And it's not necessarily for link building even, or maybe it is, but it's just a way of citing a very important source that needs to be there. That's appropriate. But most times I try to bring up my links between the um, second and fourth paragraph to get the most power. And even byline links, uh, Google has continually lowered the link juice that they put through byline links, so it's very small. Um, so try to get it actually in that content. Um, include other high authority links. This includes New York Times, um, other news sites that have a really good domain authority like we talked of earlier. And these are, when I say high authority, I mean above um, 85 domain authority, so very high. Because when Google indexes it, if they see your link among the other links in the same article, and if the other links have a really high authoritative uh, power, they'll uh, kind of push that power over to your link a little bit. Um, so they'll think, oh, these are high authority links as well, and that probably means that this website is high authority too. Uh, make the link relevant to the article and site. Relevance is key when it comes to link building. Yes, you can link build and it be irrelevant, like I can publish a link about cars, I heard a beep. Oh. Never mind, that's me. Sorry about that. Um, you can publish a link about cars like CJ Pony parts uh, and then put it on a scrapbooking site. Yes, that will still send power, but it won't send as much as you did it on a, another car site. So make sure you have a relevant uh, topic. If you can't get a relevant blog, at least try to make it a relevant few paragraphs in the article itself or the, just a relevant um, article even though the site might not be that relevant. Um, also, 
create awesome content. You might think this is obvious, but there's so many times link builders, because uh, this industry has progressed so quickly, that link builders just spin content and just throw it out there thinking, you know, my link's to the content. It's the content link. It works. No, I mean, Google is very picky on the quality of the content. And uh, so you want to make sure that if you can, and they're on WordPress, go ahead and optimize it with SEO Yoast on WordPress if they have another uh, different plugin that they use to optimize the post. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have a great headline. Go ahead and share it on your social media. Um, include a picture and make sure that picture has a um, alternative or alternative text that tells uh, the audience and also Google what the picture is about. Um, videos are great too if you can embed a video. Uh, Google for some reason really likes it when you pack it full of images. So there's a lot of content there. Um, something that's coming up big that I'll probably discuss later is skyscraper content, which is like 2,000 word articles with lots of graphs and images and videos, because that type of content ranks really well. And the better this post, this article that you're publishing ranks uh, with your link, the better and the more link juice that your article will send to your site. So um, the last two is diversify your anchor text. You want to make sure you grow a balanced link profile. Um, you don't want too many really strong anchor texts because Google will catch on. So sometimes you just need to put, check out this article here and link from the here. Or maybe you need to say, um, check out WebPageFX uh, link building uh, programs and, and sales on the CJ Pony site. You know, sometimes you need to have that long anchor text. Uh, packed full of words and not just necessarily sell mustang parts or um, buy have a heart trap. You know, it needs to be diversified and uh, have a good uh, round link profile in order to make it look natural so Google doesn't think, oh, this is just link building. Let's uh, not count this. So the last point is link to previously published articles to give them more power. If you do link building a lot, you'll find that a lot of times you write about similar subjects. So instead of just always getting different links uh, as resources and new articles, think about the links that you've are, or the articles you've already published. So you know, once I publish uh, this link building ninja guide at Schweike, I'm going to link to it from other articles I write on hot and social media and other articles about link building um, because it will push power and link juice to this article that I just wrote, which will push power to the links that are in it. Uh, so kind of like a chain effect. Now the unspoken rules of guest hosting. Uh, what should you know about these rules? Uh, well, first, uh, make sure you always share your posts on social media, uh, whether that's Twitter, Google+, and, and let the blogger know that because it's really important to them that, you know, not only are they publishing your content, and yes, you do give them free content, but, you know, they're going to share that post on their social media. So kind of give them a, a little back by sharing on yours and getting the word out about their blog to send traffic there. So always share it on social media. Secondly, answer comments. Go ahead and make a tab on your bookmarks bar on the internet and bookmark all the different articles that you write and check up on them weekly and see did anyone leave a comment and make sure you respond to that comment because, you know, another reason why bloggers allow you to guest post because they just need a break sometimes. And so this is a great way for you to show, hey, I'm worthy uh, to guest post on your blog again. And uh, Yes, uh, commenting can also lead to new ways uh, to make relationships with people in that niche, as well as other bloggers, who a lot of bloggers comment on each other's blogs. It's a blogging community, so you kind of need to get into that spirit um, and build relationships that way as well. Three, uh, link to the article, or link to other articles on their blog. So uh, just don't link to all those high sites, just don't link to your articles that you previously write, uh, and I try to link to their articles that they've previously written on their own blog um, higher up so they see, you know, just as a courtesy, I don't tell them, it, but they'll notice it. 
um, that, hey, look, they linked to one of my previous articles in their article. Because interlinking is very important to Google. And so this uh, helps the blogger out, and they really appreciate it in the end, which leaves more opportunity to you to guest post again. Also, uh, I try to limit the links in articles and bylines. Uh, so usually, depending on the length of the article, let's say it's typically around 600-word article, I try to only put three links. Uh, and bylines, two max, unless it's a really long byline, which normally bylines are two to three sentences. So, you know, put your blog or your company uh, website and then your Twitter or a, a social contact. And I try to limit it to two or else it looks spammy and people are less likely to click on it, especially if you're looking for people to click on that link to get to your website. And of course, um, include a picture uh, from Flickr Creative Commons or Photo Pin, uh, and people really appreciate you taking the extra effort to get that image on there since images are such a big thing in Google now. So that is uh, the unspoken rules of guest posting, a little bit about how to guest post and become that link building ninja, and that's strictly just talking about uh, blogs, and we'll go into more depth next time about linkable assets, which are really becoming popular in the SEO world to get links. I hope you enjoyed the webinar, and once again, if you have any questions or any ideas for future webinars, please email me. My email is at the bottom there. And thanks for listening.